Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech. And today we have Samsung's Q90T 4K TV. It's new for 2020 and might be the best balanced TV that they have released this year. Now it sits below the Q800T, which I just recently reviewed and above the Q80T, which I also reviewed. And in this video, we're gonna unbox it and go over it. Stick around. So I think we're gonna see just how good this TV is packaged because shipping was not very kind to it, as you can see. All right, so this is Samsung's 4K flagship for 2020, but their 8K TVs have better features, as I mentioned in my Q800 review. But that doesn't mean this isn't one worth looking at, so let's dig in. First up, we have the unboxing instructions, but you don't need that because that's why I'm here. First, we have the stand mount and the screws to actually connect it. Then the accessories bag with a power cable, remote control, and a pair of batteries. All right, so let's get this box out. Last up, we have the stand. And in case you didn't realize, there's no more one connect box. Next, we can place the styrofoam in the box to act as structural support to install this TV stand. Now comes the stand installation, which is pretty simple. We have a total of eight screws, which we need four of them to install each piece of the stand. This is the part we install first, and these two lips goes into these two indentations. Slide right in, and then there are four screw holes that we have to secure it with. Then we place the stand with the elongated part forward and we just slip it onto these three lips again. And then we install the screws. Voila. Q90T comes in four sizes, ranging from 55 to 85 inches. It has a 4K panel with a native 120 Hz refresh rate. It has 120 local dimming zones and support HDR10, HDR10+, and HLG. It does not support Dolby Vision like all other Samsung TVs. It has the Quantum Processor 4K for AI upscaling and picture processing and has their object tracking sound technology to track objects as they move across the screen. It has 100% coverage of the DCI-P3 color space and supports AMD FreeSync. It has three HDMI 2.0 ports and one full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 port. It has support for HDMI 2.1 features like ERC and VRR and supports Google, Alexa and Bixby smart assistants. It's setup time. All right. So we press right and it identifies all the HDMI devices you have connected. We can see HDMI number three is the audio return channel, while HDMI four is the HDMI 2.1 port. And after we, to begin setup, you probably should turn on, not probably, but you should turn on all your devices connected to the HDMI port so we can identify them and we select our Wi-Fi so you agree to these terms depending on how you plan to use the TV so if you want interest-based advertising then you agree to that policy but I am personally not interested in that so I like to have them collect as little information from me as possible you might know this but I just uh, select viewing information services and that's it. And if you have a Samsung account, you can always sign into it so you can download apps and everything and have the TV be set up automatically, but we're gonna go manually. So we click next and it asks you what voice assistant you want to use. You can use the proprietary Bixby by Samsung, Alexa, 
but in this case we want none so we'll choose later. Then you put in your zip code for cable TV service information. And once you get through that, then it goes to identify all the HDMI devices you have connected. <laughs> it's complete and it's still unknown, okay. It's a cable box, but we don't need it to be actually set up. This is for people with a Samsung account on their phone, which it helps you to basically sign into your apps uh, using your phone so you don't have to do that on the TV. It sends your TV ID um, to your Samsung account and then has that has has it help you sign into said apps but we don't have that so we're just gonna skip and then it asks you what apps you want to have installed off the bat so let's do Showtime no let's not do Showtime HGTV and Apple Music am I ready to enjoy my smart hub yeah now it's interesting or it's pretty cool that Samsung has adaptive picture and adaptive sound plus which once you enable intelligent mode will switch up the picture and the sound based on the content you're watching so you can have the best experience whether it be picture or sound. So if we enable that right now you can see where the TV gets dimmer because it reduces the light output because the room is so dark. But we don't want to use this at the moment. We'll test this later on, but we can skip this for now. You can also share content on your phone to the TV using Tab View, which is basically NFC uh, communication between your TV and phone. We test the channels and there we go. Love Island. Let's start watching that or not. So did any of you notice that there's no longer any one connect box with the TV? The TV has the same design as last year's Q90R, but there is no one connect box now. Everything is just inside the TV, which is fine, but then you have to connect all your HDMI cables to the TV directly instead of having it connected to a box that is out of the way. That was one of the benefits, I think, of having a Q90R last year where you have only one cable providing power and signal to the TV and not have to worry about the actual like power cables and HDMI cables, so there's no more of that. But first impressions, the design carries over from last year's model, which is not a bad thing because it looks good and sleek, so that's definitely not a bad thing. As far as the picture goes, it's in the standard movie mode right now and it looks very good. It also has the new filmmaker mode because of the recent firmware update. I didn't get a chance to actually review the filmmaker mode performance in the Q800T when I reviewed that their 8K set a few weeks ago, but it will be in this one, so I'll have a chance for that. So I'll be testing the FreeSync performance also, uh, gaming on my PC and my console, so stick around for that. I'll also be doing the screen test so we can see exactly how the screen performs because Samsung has the great um, ultra view angle technology where the alpha axis viewing is very good. They also, in this TV, have 120 local, full array local dimming zones as opposed to the 224 found in the 8K Q800T. So I'm interested to see how the performance compares to that of their 8K TV. So stick around for the screen test where I'll be testing that and things like screen uniformity and picture processing. Stay tuned. I definitely plan to make full use of this TV since Samsung sent it out to me and I'll also be comparing it to LG's OLED because um, I think that's a very good comparison to make. That's always been a very highly requested video and a lot of you out there want to see that so I'll be uh, publishing that one also. But that quintessential QLED HDR pop is definitely present and the colors are very vibrant as you can expect from such a TV because it has full coverage of the DCI-P3 color space. Images are not only vivid, they're also contrasting, and I haven't seen that much blooming yet. Um, I'll see exactly how much there is in my test, but the blooming so far has been minimal. Let's see if when we get it into a very extreme situation, if it, st it still remains the same. Let me know in the comments if there's any test or comparison you guys would like me to do on this TV and I'll do my best to make it happen. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it and thanks for watching. Until next time, 
This has been your friend the neighborhood villa man saying be safe and peace.